everyone, I'm Karen Conrad. Welcome to Sweet Tea Hospitality. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to create that dream master suite. I'm going to inspire you to create a designer look without the designer price. You don't want to miss it. Welcome to Sweet Tea Hospitality, where we bring inspiration to your home and your heart. My name is Karen Conrad, and I'm so glad you joined me today. We're gonna to be talking about one of the most important rooms in our home, and that is the master suite. I'm in our South Lake, Texas home, and our master suite is right behind me. Do you know, this is a very important room and Dave and I make sure that we create an atmosphere that is relaxing, welcoming, and rejuvenating. Rest is really important to God and you can create that dream master suite without spending a designer price. In our coastal cottage renovation, we actually moved the master suite from one side of the house to the other. I'm really excited to show you this project. I think we made a really good decision, but I'd love to hear what you think about it. Well, I'm headed down to the project and looking forward to seeing some progress in some key areas today. We're in the wing of the house where there are three bedrooms and one of the bedrooms was a designated master. This bedroom was a secondary bedroom. However, when we took a close look at it, we realized that this is actually a better suited master bedroom than the other space. And I'll be taking you through the closet area and into the bathroom and show you what we're going to do there to transition it. But I wanna point out that several of the rooms in this house had popcorn ceiling. And so we are so grateful. We've got uh, Joe and Miguel here working. They're getting the popcorn ceiling off. It's making a mess, but you know what? We're gonna be replacing the carpet, so we're not worried about it. And we're gonna be so happy to get that old popcorn ceiling off and get a nice new updated texture in all the rooms. This is the closet area of what I'll call the future master bedroom. Because this house was built in the 60s, there's not a lot of closet space. And so especially in a master bedroom, it's so important that we've got as much closet space as possible. So we've got two sides of closets here and going into the bathroom, which right now actually has an opening from the hallway into here, we are going to transition this, transform it into a master bathroom, sheetrock this wall so there's no entrance coming in from the hallway, and uh, this is gonna become a beautiful master bathroom that I think is probably gonna have the biggest impact of change for this property. We're still talking through our options here. We've got several people that we've had come to the house to kind of help us think this through. Uh, but we definitely want this master bathroom to have a shower and a bathtub and to have two vanities or at least two sinks on the vanity. The space in this bathroom is oddly large and empty. And so there's plenty of room for us to either add another vanity in or what we're thinking about doing is opening up this closet and adding a stand-up shower in this space, but we'd have to move the water heater and then leaving the bathtub in the place that it's at with, with a glass separation there. This would make it really feel like a nice master bathroom. And then adding a vanity on this side, updating the vanity on this side so that there's plenty of space for two people to be able to function in here and get ready in the morning.
Welcome back to my Sweet Tea Designer Workshop. Today we're working on the Master Suite. There was definitely a lot of problems to be solved with that Master Suite. The big thing was making the decision to actually move it across the hall to the other part of the house. In that, we had to close the door off that was going into the hallway for that master bathroom. One of the things we ran into that I really didn't expect is that the beadboard that was in the existing hallway was interrupted from the door and we had to figure out how we were going to make that tie in so that when people looked down the hallway, they couldn't tell that we had actually filled in a door space. And so our general contractor came up with something that I think was absolutely genius. It was paneling that was the beadboard and it was very difficult. We couldn't match the paneling and so we had seams. So what he did is he figured out where those seams were and he put a strip of wood over that and then the next seam from the door, a strip of wood over that and he continued with those wood strips on the whole hallway. So do you know what? It was a problem and he made it a solution that provided a better look for that hallway with more interest than before. Now that is turning a design blender into something that's very, very positive. The next problem that we had to address is what were we going to do to take this dated, dated bathroom and make it look all fresh and new? So one of the first things you have to do is create your color scheme. So I got out my paint colors and I decided that we would indeed paint those walls repose gray. We would paint all of the trim and those vanities in the alabaster. And what that does is it ties it into the rest of the house. One thing you may not be aware of as a homeowner is that as you go in and through your house, if you've got different color schemes in each room, it can feel kind of chopped up and there's not the continuity that we like to have in our homes. So this would be something as a homeowner that you would take a look at and say, I wonder if there would be a way for me to tie this master suite into the color scheme of the rest of the house. So in doing that, it was a continuous look. We actually ended up getting a nice porcelain floor at Lowe's that was very soft and tied the colors in between the cultured marble that we chose, the hallway color, uh, the flooring and the carpet. So it was all consistent and it didn't cost us any more to do it. It was just coming in with a plan for the color scheme that we could follow through with. Now that master bathroom was definitely ugly, definitely awkward. And one of the things that we noticed is that the wall coming out was cutting off too much of the bathroom. So instead of going through the expense of completely removing that wall between the vanity and the toilet, we just cut it back a few feet. It completely opened it up. And on the other side of that, for very little expense, we had some custom shelves built in a brown wood to complement the color scheme and bring some of that uh, deepness into the tones on the wall by the toilet. We also brought in a beautiful black uh, light fixture. I love to bring elegance into a bathroom. And then I chose black mirrors and black light fixtures to tie it into the rest of the house. The master bedroom itself from that point was very easy. We simply painted the walls, the repose gray. We already had the new windows and we brought in some nice new carpet that really brought this whole master suite together. So if you're a homeowner and you wanna create a space that is all coordinated and really makes you feel like you're resting and peaceful, use these tips to bring it all together in a coordinated color scheme and without spending a lot of money, you will have a brand new master suite. We faced 
a huge conundrum and mystery. Oh my goodness, Dave, do you remember I was in the front or on the front porch and I was like fussing with the cedar boxes, getting things ready and I looked up and I thought, where does this window go? From the outside, there is like this yellowish curtain and I could not figure out what room that window went into. Yeah, so we did a little uh, treasure hunt, so we to speak. did. Finding the mysterious window in the house. Yes. Went into the bathroom, the master suite. I thought for sure it was in there. We even removed the mirror and there was nothing. <laughs> so lo and behold, we kept going down the wall and we opened up the master closet and we're like, what's going on in there? And there it was a completely covered wall, plywood, yes, painted, <laughs> screwed into the wall, and we took it all apart, and there was the window. We did, and so we kind of did the big reveal. So uh, we were all at work trying to figure out how to get this piece off. Levi had the crowbar. Mm -hmm. You were using the drill, I guess, to pull the screws out. Uh, and lo and behold, we got it pulled out and there was like this vintage curtain. It had to be there when the house was built over 50, like 60 years. And we couldn't figure it out. For some reason, these people decided to cover up a window. And then I thought, this is strange. How are we going to make uh, lemonade out of this lemon? Something that I would consider to be a big asset for a master bedroom closet is natural light. And so it was really a nice surprise when we were able to pull that off and add natural light to the closets. So we kept these original closet doors. I really like, they function well. I like the look of the shutters and with a his and a hers closet on each side, it seemed to really set us up nicely for a master suite. Welcome to the Coastal Cottage Master Bedroom. I absolutely love this room. As I mentioned, we moved it from the other side of the house, from the back part of the house to the front of the house, and we replaced all the windows. So in this room, we have a beautiful picture window that lets in a lot of natural light. In addition, we updated the wall colors with the repose gray. We brought in fresh carpet, and I really like the decor in here, being just subtle, elegant, very peaceful. A matter of fact, behind me, what you're seeing is a picture that I got in Wayfair that I just have loved. It's wood and it's got kind of an ocean look. But also, I've got these pillows that I found at Kirkland's and I just love them. They've got like little pom-poms on them and I thought, I want to put these somewhere. And it just fit perfectly in this bedroom. So when we've got those nice, soft, subtle elements, we've created this space for seating and reading uh, with a nice lamp by the picture window. Anytime that you're doing a master bedroom, if you can carve out some space for a chair, it helps to create the look of a master suite rather than just a master bedroom. Also, finally, I just wanna share with you that in the master bedroom, I like to have the end tables with lamps, and I like to have nice messages in a master bedroom. So you'll see on the end table, I've got this cute little sign that says, I love us, and I've got some fresh looking tulips as well. One trick that you wanna keep in mind, or you might say a tip, is when you use artificial flowers, it's fine to do, but I find the best way to utilize them is to keep the color monochromatic. As soon as you start mixing fake flowers, it looks very, very fake. But when we keep it the same color, and in this case, I did white tulips from Hobby Lobby, it creates a fresh look, it doesn't look overly fake, and it brings an elegance into the room that is fitting for a master bedroom suite.
The master suite is a really important room from a practical standpoint, meaning for real estate value. I've uh, had home staging clients that that really had to address the master suite because when you walked into it, it did not feel like a beautiful space. But from a spiritual standpoint, the master suite is really important. When you think about it, that's the place that we retire at the end of the day. That's the place that we go to sleep and wake up in the morning. That's when we say good night to our spouse and good morning to our spouse. For Dave and I, it's a place that we have coffee in the morning. And it's important that we pay attention and make this space as beautiful as possible. It reminds me of the Song of Songs that says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. And they make references to spending time together in the vineyard in a garden, which communicates beauty and airiness. And that is what we should focus on and create in our master suites and bedrooms. There are spaces as a couple that we create in a home that are special. And obviously the master suite is certainly one of them. I've seen people that don't pay attention to what their master suite looks like. And it's messy, it's cluttered, uh, it's dark, it's dingy. And you know what? You can see that reflected in their relationship. So I wanna encourage you I'm not trying to condemn you if your bedroom looks like that, but I want to encourage you that if you focus on this space and just clear out some of the clutter in there, if you open up the windows and, and create some freshness, it's going to make a big difference in your relationship. So beauty, airiness, keeping it neat. It's where we end the day and start the day together. Make it your private retreat. God's interaction in the night is something that we can also call upon. The Word of God tells us, when my mind is asleep, my heart is awake. So what did this beautiful master suite cost? Well, I'm gonna give you some of the expenses for developing and creating this master suite, but I want you to keep in mind that if you're doing some of these renovations in your own home, you'll be able to save money because you can do a lot of this yourself. So painting the wood, the doors, and the vanities cost about $1,000. Now, if I would have purchased new vanities, we would have been well above that amount. And so it was very worth that investment. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get nice hardware. And what I included in there are things like the shower heads, uh, you know, the new faucets, even the knobs that are on the vanity. And we got all of that at Home Depot and we just installed those ourselves, of, of course, except for the plumbing. So if you check out some of those places, you can get really, really nice hardware for not much money and it brings an immense amount of value to the property. Flooring, this is an area where if you learn to do this yourself, you could do this for a fraction of the price that we did. We spent about $2,000 on the porcelain tile. Closets, again, you can do that yourself at home. We painted the inside of the closet. We reworked the shelving and made it make sense and look like it was updated and new. There wasn't a lot of space for these master closets. So we had to make sure that the space we had was extremely functional and looked nice and fresh. One of the areas we did put a lot of investment in and I was so happy we did is a cultured marble and the shower. So we looked at tile, which you've probably considered as well. The reason we chose cultured marble, and it could be a good option for you in your home, is that it comes in slabs. So instead of having to install individual tiles, you install one big slab and it looks so clean. And it's really, really easy to keep clean. 
To tie the shower into the existing tub, we added the cultured marble around the tub to tie them together and to provide a little bit of a barrier so that when the kids came in to take a bath that we wouldn't be soaking the sheetrock. Next, the countertops. We wanted to make sure we had the consistency, so we used the same countertops that we had in the kitchen, which is a Calcutta uh, quartz, and that was $750. Light fixtures made a huge difference, and if you wanna do an update in your bathroom, matter of fact, when I look at pictures, I study homes all the time, Sometimes if I look at a bathroom, I think, you know what? The only thing they need to do is switch out those light fixtures. And so maybe you've got a dated one. Maybe you've got a bright brass light fixture or a, or a bronze one and you want to switch it out. Switch out the light fixture and then switch out your knobs and it will look all on purpose. And we only spent $350 on lighting in this bathroom. The layout changes, we had to move the water heater, close the wall, that cost $850. And then installing those shelves was very minimal, about $250, and it added an incredible uh, addition and warmth to the space. So all in all, for the master suite renovation, it cost $7,175. I hope you've enjoyed this episode on our renovation of the master suite in the Coastal Cottage. Maybe you're renovating, but if you're not, I just wanna encourage you to take the tips we've learned and I hope I've inspired you to create that space in your master suite that is beautiful, airy, and has that rest and relaxation that God intends for you. Thank you so much for joining me today on Sweet Tea Hospitality. My name is Karen Conrad.